here. I didn't have a gang in, in you know, a group in, in high school. Uh, but and there were these cool, really cool kids, and they were talking about great things like the Cuban Revolution, which had just happened in 59, or the, the Chinese Revolution, but the Cultural Revolution, which was just taking off. Maoism. You know, a lot of them were children of communists, um, or socialists, or labor people. Um, they, they, um, um, there was a term called red diaper babies. <laughs> it's a metaphor. It means kids who were born into families, kids who grew up in families of, of parents who were, who were uh, communist, socialist, labor. And, and a, lot, a lot of these people were red diaper babies. And they had learned growing up that in order to effect social change, you have to build a movement, a large movement. And, and movement building demands a set of skills, a set of practices called organizing. So I kind of fell in with this bunch. And I, I, I wasn't from a labor background. My parents were only vague, you know, and they were very apolitical. But they, 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 my grandmother worshipped uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt because she thought the coolest thing that had ever been invented in the history of the world was Social Security. You know? The fact that she had a pension was, was, uh, was, was just incredible to her. So um, um, we were sort of like New Deal Democrats, but not, not strong political. My father um, had gone to school in the, in the uh, 20s and, uh, with, with, with kids who, who had become communists. And they had, had, he had seen their lives ruined. So he said, well, keep your head down. In fact, my father was a lieutenant colonel in the army. It, it, um, uh, not because he was patriotic. I mean, it, uh, 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 because it was a job in 1932 when he graduated. So um, I joined Students for Democratic Society. And it was a, a local autonomous chapter. And, and we set about organizing the campus. That was our goal. It was to build a base, to get as many people as possible. And so we did all these things like knocking on doors and dormitories and talking to people. Well, what do you think about the Vietnam War? In fact, that's how I met the, the, the people. If, you, if anybody's read my book, um, Underground, I talk about being a, a freshman and studying and being bored in my dorm room. And, and, and a guy knocks on my door, and it turns out to be a senior by the name of David Gilbert. Uh, who was the chairman of the Columbia chapter of SDS, and he had heard that I might be interested. He came to talk to me. And so we sat and talked. And um, that's a particular poignant story, because David Gilbert is in prison now um, for the rest of his life. And um, I could talk about that and the various interplays and stuff. But he was my mentor, and he, already, he talked me into coming to my first SDS meeting. And, um, but anyway, we knocked on doors. I joined them. We knocked on doors. We, we have meetings, like a, a, a room like this with this number of people. And the sole question was, how, what do we do? How do we build our base? How do we get more people involved? That's the question. Um, all kinds of confrontations with the administration over research for the military, over their expansion into um, uh, the Harlem community, which uh, uh, joins uh, Morningside Heights. Um, um, I should also mention that it was not just the war that was happening at the time. Um, growing up in the, in the 50s and 60s, the civil rights movement was like, it, it was earth-shaking to us. You know, the, the, the idea that, that this country wasn't filled with justice for all. Um, the images coming out of the South were, were just mind-blowing. But then, before I, I got involved, in 64, the Civil Rights Movement had a turn. And militancy, and black power, and separation, and a lot of other things were happening that challenged white people. And so this was part of the discussion that was happening. It was very vibrant. So it was, and it was not just happening in Columbia, it, was, it happened at Grinnell and, uh, and on most campuses. Um, in the late winter and spring 
of 1968, now we're in 1968. Uh, January to March of 68, the Vietnamese attacked American, uh, 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 South Vietnamese cities on American bases, uh, over 160 simultaneously. And that was a complete and total shock to the American military and to the American public because we have been told the same lies, word for word, the light at the end of, well, they don't use light at the end of the film. They say, we're winning the war, you know, the Afghan forces are making progress. It's the same stuff. The South Vietnamese forces are making progress. The Tet Offensive gave the lie to the idea that we were, we were or could win the war in Vietnam. And public opinion on the war flipped in a matter of two months. So much so that the President of the United States, Lyndon Johnson, announced on March 31st that he wasn't going to run for re-election. Uh, there had been a challenge in the Democratic Party, um, uh, a, a peace challenge, and it was growing. Um, on April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King was, was assassinated in Memphis. And there have been riots in, in before in, in cities like the Newark, New Jersey, which is right borders the town I grew up in 67. But in 68, Harlem blew up, as did about 100 cities around the country. And I myself saw it and ran down into it to try to figure out what was going on and to experience it. And, and it looked like there was an internal war going on. So the, the murder of Martin Luther King on April 4th challenged everybody in the whole country, no matter what color you were, about racism and what were we going to do. There's a whole buildup, but it all exploded at Columbia on April 23rd, 1968. Uh, and it wasn't planned. The SCS chapter uh, uh, was not in control. We were, I was not the leader, although I happened to find myself as chairman of SDS at the time, and the media picked me up. They, they said, well, you're the leader, right? And we will only talk to you. And I, 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 maybe fortunately or unfortunately, I played into it, and, and with, the, with the blessing of, of, of the organization. I was more of a facilitator. But anyway, blow up, and we wound up holding five buildings, occupying five buildings, over a thousand people, with supporters on the outside for a whole week. Because the administration was scared to death of calling the cops because Harlem was right next door. And there had just been this riot. Oh, and one building was held by the black students. Very important. The white students were, at that point, supporting the black students. This is a complicated story, and you can read about it in my book or a lot of different places. Um, the police came. Uh, they were arrested over 600 people. And they beat up hundreds of people, quite indiscriminately. And um, that then uh, uh, set off a student strike, uh, where the whole campus went out on strike. And that, that Columbia Rebellion of 68 became the model of um, student rebellion. Uh, it was the largest uh, student strike up to that point. And, and, and uh, um, I found myself after, I was thrown out of school, and I was drafted. But um, I told my mother to go in. I went to organize in the military. So yes. They told me, I, 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 they gave me a psychological discharge. <laughs> I became a national traveler for SDS. And I traveled around. I, uh, I, I, I could almost think I might have been here at Grinnell. I have to look back on some notes. But I almost think I was here at some point in 68 or 69. Um, in traveling around, um, I told the story of what had happened in Columbia. And, and the way I would tell the story was it was our militancy. It was our, our, our courage. It was our uh, willingness to act, to, to, to commit ourselves, to make a moral statement um, uh, in, in occupying and in holding the buildings. And I conveniently, or uh, and tragically, I think, forgot the part about the three years or five years, was way before I got there, of, of, of organizing along this model of the civil rights movement, the labor movement that, that, uh, uh, that, we, that we were using. Um, in fact, I was quoted, I, I, I would often say, organizing is another word for going slow. <laughs> and so I was an advocate of speed and audacity and 
self and, 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 and putting it out there and showing people what we really believe. We formed a faction in SDS, the larger SDS, News for Democrat Society, and eventually that came to a fight. And this is a long story, which I will only go into if anybody wants to know this arcane and esoteric history of the faction fighting in SDS. But I wound up the National Secretary of SDS, elected in 1969, and in control of the national office and the newspaper and various resources and regional offices. And, and there's a lot more to be said about the history of SDS, not going into that, if anybody wants to know about it. Um, and I, um, uh, we called this crazy thing called a, a national action. It was a demonstration in Chicago for October of 69, in which our goal was to fight cops. <laughs> we wanted to show how militant we were. We wanted to show them that the cops were the agents of imperialism. You know? and, and, and there's a lot more to be said about this, but we actually did it. And we got creamed, of course. And um, uh, fewer people went to Chicago in October than had been with us in June, despite all our efforts of organizing. But we didn't take that as any uh, indication of that we might have made a mistake. And we decided, oh no, we have to go further. So we declared now is the time, and we've been talking about revolution. Oh, or since about late 68. Instead of talking about the end of the war, uh, which incidentally was what the Vietnamese wanted us to do. They wanted us to unite as many people as possible to end the war. We, we, was, we said in 69, that's not enough. We have to end the system, the whole system that gives us war and imperialism and racial injustice and economic injustice under capitalism. The capitalist system has to go. It's time for revolution. We knew the truth. So we called for revolution. And this guy, who had already died in Latin America by the name of Che Guevara, Ernesto Che Guevara, he was calling out to us from the grave, do it. Do it. Revolutionaries don't just talk about it, they do it. El deber de todo revolucionario es hacer la revolución. You know? You've got to do it. So we said, we've got to do it. And even though we got creamed in Chicago, we said, we're going to start the underground. We're going to do it because we know it's right and people will join us. We know they'll join us, even though there was no indication that anybody <laughs> Or the indication had happened back at Columbia under different conditions, at a different time, a perfect political storm, years of organizing, we forgot all of that. So we 